All right, guys, let's go fishing. Ooh. I was looking for ladies and gentlemen. All right guys, we'll extend our rod here. Grab the line off the roof. The reel. <clears throat> it's okay guys, I got the instructions. We'll figure this out together. Oh great, the instructions are in uh, Japanese. Hmm. Now, among the things in fly fishing that is arguably most hated, Kinkara fishing has to be way up there. Uh, even some of my best friends, when I texted them and said I was, I brought a Kinkara rod, they were like, gross, and uh, I would rather use a stick and things like that. And it's just got this huge negative stigma about it, which is interesting. And that's part of the reason I decided to go buy one and see what it's all about. Now, if you don't know, Tinkara fly fishing is a form of fly fishing that was uh, developed in Japan, actually. Hence the Japanese instructions for this rod that I have. Now, this rod is actually a Japanese rod. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it because it'll just be embarrassing. But I decided to go with the Japanese rod just because it's a Japanese developed technique. So I figured it only made sense to kind of go with a Japanese rod. So my plan is, is to go through and fish with this rod and hopefully catch some fish for you guys. Now guys, Tinkara fishing is a form of fly fishing that basically involves no reel. And you basically literally tie the tip of your line, or you tie the line to the tip of your rod on this little, I don't know, piece of string. It's called something and I don't remember. By the way, if you guys are Tinkara fishermen and you're watching this, please continue watching because you're going to have to teach me how to do a lot of things. But I do know how to attach the line to the tip of my little rod string thing i learned that much through youtube videos but yeah i just have this level line which is real bright orange and then i'm gonna attach tip it to the tip of the line um and then i'm gonna use this line as a cider for when i tie it line through this creek at least that's my plan and hopefully we'll catch some fish and have some fun doing it Oh, I got a fish. I got my the tip wrapped and I pulled up and there's a fish on it. Feels halfway decent. Gotta make sure I got room behind me to net. I would say it feels halfway decent, but honestly, uh, all the fish feel halfway decent on this rod, which is kind of why it's fun. What are you? Might be a brown, boys. It is a brown. That's cool. Not a big brown, but it's a brown. For all you Tinkar anglers out there, how the heck do you land these dang things, man? Like, I can land that fish, but if it was any bigger, we'd have we'd be in trouble. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I was sitting there like, oh, look, my rod's all screwed up. And I catch this fish. He looks like he might be a stock brown. Get my line out of there real quick. He looks like he may be a stock brown, but it's a decent little fish nonetheless. Well, I don't know. He's got some clean fins. He might be a fingerling fish. He doesn't quite look wild because his spots aren't quite very well defined, but his tail's perfect. Fins are perfect. So get big, buddy. Get big. But there you go. Tinkara fishing. Now there used to always be a few fish in these couple holes here, starting with this one. Used to be, doesn't mean there still is. Yep, got one, told you, stock rainbow. Oh, don't go underneath there. Decent little stock bow. Unfortunately, I'm in a real awkward position. It's a decent stock rainbow. Ooh! 
<laughs> Why was that the most pathetic jump I've ever seen? Like he didn't even shake his head. He was like, yeet. <laughs> oh man. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. It's a really clean looking rainbow trout. He's been in here a minute. Solid stock rainbow. I mean, he's probably 15 inch fish. Maybe 16, I don't freaking know. Look at that. Sweet, man. Thanks for playing, buddy. Right back into where he came from. Someone else might catch him one day. All right, usually I can pick one out of one of these pockets here on either side of this rock. So we'll see if we can't do it again today. Got him. Right out of that pocket on that far side there. That was cool. That's a real little dinky stalker. Real little dinky fella. All right, another little stock bow and he's gone. See you, buddy. Thanks for playing. All right, guys, another pocket, another fish. Am I right or am I right? There it is. I'm gonna try to pull it out a little bit quicker because I don't want to Mostly because I'd see if I catch more than one fish out of here. So I'm not gonna let him go back. Or maybe I will because I don't have a choice. Come back here, buddy. Oops. Seriously, look at this fish, man. A little stocked fish is acting like it owns the place. I'll tell you, I gotta get better at landing these fish in this stupid, with this rod, because it is an adventure every single time. I know it's my fault. I just don't exactly know why it's my fault. All right, ladies and gents. There he is. It's a regular little stock bow. Where are you going to go? You going to hide under that rock? Maybe. <laughs> Hard to tell with these stock trout. All right, guys. So this right here is the last pocket. Usually I can catch a fish out of here. Usually. At least a stalker, you'd think. but we'll find out. I don't know if that's a fish or not. Oh God, that was a fish. I saw him come up. I don't know if he'll eat again or not. He looked like he, I don't think he felt the hook, but he definitely moved. sitting right on that freaking rock like on the rock got him <laughs> love it when it's predictable man oops got him love it when it's predictable Ugh. also the fish this time of the year man like stock trout wise if you wanted to catch your limit you could do it with your eyes closed I think I mean, dang near every good pocket has a decent fish, usually. And it's just a matter of figuring out what they want to eat. So in my opinion, this is the easiest time of the year to catch them. Now, you know what, just, can you? Sorry, I would have done a more graceful release, but he was not giving up. There used to always be a fish or two in here. See if we can't get one to eat and not get stuck, hopefully. There we go. Oh, what? How did he come off? That's weird. You say I know there's always a fish in here, but I didn't expect him to pop off. There we go. I don't know if that's the same fish or not. If that is the same fish, that's hilarious. 
I'm not going there, buddy. Come here, my friend. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man, dude, this is fun. Come here, buddy. I know. I wouldn't want to come here either. Got him. Getting better at netting the fish, at least. All right, guys, I caught a few fish, but I didn't really get to test out this technique to my specifications. Um, I have a few things I have to do midday, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back this afternoon, and it's supposed to actually rain this afternoon, so I'm gonna come back this afternoon and hopefully catch a few more fish and then give kind of a review of Tinkara, or at least a review of what how I feel about Tinkara. So, uh, so far, so good. Uh, one thing I will say just real quick before we move into this afternoon is that I've noticed that with having the line connected directly to the rod gives you like a certain amount of like you can feel everything with that like it's a more direct connection to the, the flies and because of that I can feel literally everything that's going on under the surface so that is at least one positive that I have, that I have found so far just with like tight lining some of these little stretches in this creek but anyway let's get into this afternoon well I have somehow gotten the first hip piece stuck right here like this doesn't go all the way in, which means I just have this thing that's like for sure gonna break at some point. Um, so for those of you Tinkara anglers out there, you guys can like leave a tip for me to figure out how to get this unstuck. And I read that I shouldn't pull hard on these so that like they don't get stuck. And I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, I didn't pull hard, but I do know that a couple of the fish that I've caught have like, really jerk the rod, like when they go on their little runs. And since there's no reel, it just kind of pulls the tip of the rod. So I assume that's what happened because I sure as heck didn't do that. I mean, I barely even extended the stupid thing. So yeah, uh, leave a tip in the comment below. Or if I'm just screwed and this 10 car rod's gonna forever just be a uh, broken tip waiting to happen. So I don't know. But yeah, let's just fast forward to the evening right now. All right, let's see if we can snag something in here. It's a good looking hole, but I don't know how hard it gets fished. There we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's a nice brown, I think. Maybe not. I don't know, it looked kind of like a brown. It's a decent sized fish. Ooh, not a wild brownie. A little stock brownie, but still cool. Oh, can't stand up. Hey there, little buddy. It's pretty cool. Maybe one day he'll grow up to be a big papa. Look at that. He's been caught before and released, so somebody else is catching releasing in here. That's awesome. Love to see it. He could be a fingerling, to be honest. His tail, look how clean his tail is. So that might just be a fingerling brown. We'll go ahead and let him go. Back to where he came from. That's sweet, man. That is so cool. And car fishing is pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. Very simplistic. I'll give it that. Very simplistic. Another one. <laughs> It's a little smaller fish. Well, he's fighting like he's not smaller though. Come on, buddy. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I thought he snagged there for a second. Was that a little rainbow? Looks like a little bow. Ate the little rainbow warrior. Chill out. I'll let you go, buddy. It's an ugly looking stock rainbow. He's not looking too hot either, to be honest with you. He needed that rainbow warrior to survive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, there will be at least one fish in this hole right here. 
I can just about guarantee it. I'm probably gonna catch it, so. Strap in and do our best to land it. Ooh, that could have been a fish. Step up here so I can get a better drift. Looks like a wild brown. Looks like a wild brown. This one's gonna be a fun one to get in, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Dude, this is so much fun. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. This one looks like a wild brown. Or a brown, I should say. He's not huge, but it's my biggest fish of the day. I mean, look at that. He's just sitting down in there. Uh, no, it might just be a good stock trout. We'll say out of the things I've learned, I've learned that I should probably um, shorten my leader a little bit for my little rod I got going on here, my little setup. Oh my gosh, it is a nice wild brown. Did you guys see that? I didn't realize it was that big. Stay up here, buddy, please. I mean, he's not huge, but he's a solid boy. Hmm, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. As I said, I got this rod, it's kind of a shorter rod. Oh yeah, it's a nice little, either wild or fingerling stock brown. He looks wild, but I think, I don't know that there's even wild reproduction in here or not, to be honest with you. I believe that there is some, but he's at the very least a fingerling. This is when I wish I had a reel so I could just lift his head a little bit more. Step right up here. I think he's about ready. I'm so happy right now, boys. So happy. All right, guys, so here's my brownie. He's not a mega giant, but chill out, buddy. I gotta release here in a second. But I mean, he's a nice, solid, I believe a fingerling stock brown trout on my little Tinkara rod. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this guy released and then we'll keep fishing. That's awesome though, man. That's so cool. I didn't expect to catch a brown trout, to be honest with you. The brown trout in this creek are very, very fickle, but I think the rain has these fish turned on a bit, which is cool. So, we'll get this guy released and keep going. All right, guys. So... I'm gonna go ahead and give my review on Tinkara fly fishing. So, if you've made it this far in the video, there's a good chance that you either A, are a Tinkara fisherman, or you're super interested in Tinkara fishing. So, I'm gonna be super real with you guys, and um, if you're a Tinkara fisherman and you disagree with what I'm saying, or you have tips for me, then by all means, leave them in the comments below. So, Tinkara fly fishing, in my opinion, um, at least one of the issues I had is landing the fish was really difficult, especially if they were of any size. I know that that probably could be fixed if I got a slightly larger rod, but just when you buy a Tinkara rod, to kind of be painted into a corner, so to speak, as to what kind of species or what kind of fish you're fishing for is kind of annoying, because like, I can generally land a much bigger fish on a rod that's a little bit too small, because I'm able to pick up line and let drag out and stuff like that. But you can't do that with a Tinkara rod. The second thing with Tinkara fishing that I found that could be a little annoying is um, they're kind of touted as this great small stream rod, which they are if you have absolutely no overhead cover. So. Uh, like if you live out west, it's actually not a bad idea or at least it's a slightly better idea And it's an idea that would probably entertain a little bit more however when you're out east and you've got a lot of creeks and rivers with overhead cover that makes it literally impossible to do an overhead cast um, It makes it difficult and I know that I could do some of the same things that I do with regular uh, with regular equipment like bow and arrow casts and side hand casts or you know whatever it may be but Still, when it comes down to landing the fish, you have to be able to lift that rod up to be able to get the fish in the net. 
and there's a lot of places where you just flat out cannot do that. So in my opinion, Tenkara is just, makes it really difficult unnecessarily for a lot of situations of fly fishing, which again, I'm all for. I mean, I enjoyed it and you'll see more videos with Tenkara in the future, but as far as like my honest review on like, should a regular person go out and grab a Tenkara rod, I probably wouldn't suggest it. Um, Maybe if you're fishing in a lake or something, you could do it. Uh, but even with a lake, like you can just get so much more distance with a regular rod. So I think it's more of just a thing that you do for fun and to do as something different and stuff like that, which again, I love the idea behind that. Um, the positives for Tinkara is like I was tight lining and I kind of mentioned this earlier in the video, but that direct contact from the line to your hand uh, without having a reel or anything in the picture is just unreal. I mean you literally can feel everything and it's beautiful for that concept. Another awesome thing that I found is you can really pinpoint your cast because once you fish with it just long enough, um, you kind of get an idea of how far you can cast. And because of that, you can like leave your rod tip higher to shorten the cast or drop your rod tip to lengthen it. Um, and you can get really good at hitting like very direct and tiny little pockets, which is cool, again, as long as you have overhead cover or have some kind of room to maneuver. So anyway. Overall review to car fishing, I don't know, I'd give it like maybe a five out of 10. Something that's fun to do if you fish a lot and you're trying to look for a new challenge or uh, something like that. Having said that, no hate towards Tinkara. As I said, you'll see a lot more Tinkara videos from me, I'm sure, because I spent you know, $200 on the rod and quite honestly, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I just see some issues that would prevent me from using it uh, you know, more consistently. I'm a firm believer that a good angler is a well-rounded angler. I think if you're a fly fisherman and you can't throw a bait caster, you're missing out. I think if you're a bait caster fisherman and you're like a bass tournament fisherman, you can't fly fish, you're missing out. And I think if you're throwing streamers and you can't use a Tinkara rod, then you're missing out. So it's good to just have all those weapons in your quiver or weapons in your toolbox and be able to pull them out at any given time, uh, depending on you know what your situation calls for that day. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it's completely for you, and it helps me out a ton. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys on another episode of Hardman Fishing Adventures. Peace.